It's interesting to look back at Eric Bana's beginnings and realize that he was inspired by Mad Max and that he tried to get into comedy, only to realize that it wasn't going to pay him well enough. At that point he went back to being a barman, which isn't too bad if you get the right place and the right shift. But thankfully he went back in and decided to go for the more dramatic roles that have treated him well thus far. If you thought you were going to see the Hulk on this list however then prepare to be disappointed since between Eric's version and Edward Norton's and even Mark Ruffalo's, Eric's kind of falls way short. That being said though he's still an impressive actor that's been able to show off a lot of talent and a great deal of skill at what he does. It's easy to get excited when seeing him on screen since he brings a lot of class and something extra to whatever movie he's in. Here are the best five movies of his career. Number 5. Funny People. He's really funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know why his movies aren't funny though, that's weird isn't it? David Ehrlich of IndieWire is under the assumption, as others are, that this was a great movie and they're not so completely off the mark that you might want to laugh at them. There is some part of this movie that's actually pretty easy to like once you get past the part of thinking that it was going to be funny in any way. Adam Sandler's movies were still thought to be hilarious at this point, and people were hoping to see more of that, but when it was established that it was a lot more serious than anything it was hard for some people to cope it seems. All in all though it was put together quite well. Number 4. Munich. I was born in Israel. I'm not a yek. Uh, where is your grandpa from? Frankfurt. You're a yek. As Andrew Anthony of The Guardian states it's not usual to see Steven Spielberg having to defend himself for making a movie, but this one seemed to spark a lot of controversy among those that watched it and seemed to demand as much. The intricate and violent world of spycraft is one that a lot of people don't understand, since the stories and the reality seem to be so horribly convoluted that even those involved in the schemes need handlers and information gatherers to keep things straight a lot of times, or so it seems. All in all the movie was just another film, so show a director's vision, nothing more and nothing less. Number 3. Star Trek. Hello. I'm Captain Christopher Pike, to whom am I speaking? Hi Christopher, I'm Nero. Oh yes, Eric got to play a Star Trek villain, and he was perhaps one of the worst since he was the one that ended up changing the whole timeline to give us a new wave of Star Trek movies that some people love and others can't stop rolling their eyes at. In a way though Nero did manage to keep the legend alive and kicking in a big way since the way it was going seemed to be nose down and face first into the ground. You could say that great villains make for greater heroes since people want to see good triumph over evil more often than not, and in this case, Nero really managed to jumpstart the franchise yet again. Number 2. Deliver Us From Evil. Do you know a man named Santino? That's right. Mick. Mick Santino. <laughs> any movie that deals with theology on any level seems to either win over the audience or be almost shunned and looked at askance, as people seem to think that such things are either sacrosanct or just don't warrant being talked about. Sarchi starts out as a man that has supposedly put his faith behind him, but when you start seeing things happen that don't make sense and have something sinister driving them, one can't really deny it for that long. Eventually a person has to open their eyes and admit that something beyond their own knowledge is happening, and at that point the hard part of dealing with it comes into play. Number 1. Troy. I thought it was you I was fighting yesterday. And I wish it had been you. But I gave the dead boy the honor he deserved. You gave him the honor of your sword. Admit it, this is one of the only reasons why a lot of us were really wanting to see this movie. Apart from the fight scenes in which Achilles just took people apart with his precision and expertise, this fight was one of the absolute best of the year, since it featured two warriors that are legends in their own right for various reasons, and they were actively trying to kill each other. You can argue for one side or the other, but the fact is that Hector was a great fighter, but Achilles was as close to perfection as could be in this movie. In the legends it's hard to say since people tend to agree or disagree as they will, Eric is still a great dramatic actor, but it's as though we don't see him that often any longer. And yes we're aware of the Hulk, 